Good morning. Time to make the coffee. Today's flavor of coffee is still the bueno. I added some cinnamon to the uh, creamy hazelnut and it's pretty good. I mean it's coffee like. It's not a hundred percent like coffee but it's definitely something you could use to replace your coffee and it's made with chickpeas of all things. So today is only going to be 36 degrees. We got a little bit of snow, just a dusting on the ground, but it is cold out there. My plan is to stay home, but like I said, you never know. I kind of plan my days as I go along. Unless there's something that absolutely has to be done, I kind of pick and choose my chores according to how I feel for the day. And that's one of the nice perks about being retired. You can do that. You don't have to, of course. You know, if you've always been one that likes a structured plan, that's great. That's something you can continue to. But I've never liked a structured plan. One thing that I do have to do, though, I find as I get older, I do need to establish uh, more routines just because otherwise they either don't get done or I forget about them. So I'm still working on that, though. It's something I want to work on this year. You know, like maybe, oh, Tuesdays I'll do my floors and Wednesdays I'll dust, and Thursdays is garbage day, so I'll do a little decluttering and take out some trash. Just those kinds of routines. Just a very simple routine worked into my day. That's what I'm going to work on. And um, I actually had a cleaning routine at one point that worked very well. So I have to dig that out. I still have the paper that I made up, you know, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. So um, I have to dig that up and see what's on there now since I can't do as much as I used to do. But it was very doable and it did, didn't take up a big huge chunk of time during the day. I don't want to spend my whole day cleaning. That's just not my my thing. I just... There's a lot of other interesting things that I would rather do. And even if that means just sitting and reading a book or watching some YouTube videos or doing a craft, I'd rather do those things than clean. But I know, cleaning has to be done too. So, anyway, coffee is done. And I'm going to add some chocolate creamer to it. I know, it's not good, but I have it. I'm going to use it up. I'm not, definitely not going to throw all that stuff away. I may not repurchase a lot of things down the road, but I'm not going to throw the things away that I already have. I mean, they don't make me that sick that, you know, I can't use them at all, but they certainly might contribute to it. So that looks like coffee to me. So, cheers. Looks like coffee. Cheers. Pretty good. It's warm, it's creamy, has a coffee-like taste. So, and for those of you that are new here, this is the Bueno coffee replacement. I got it on Amazon, and it's only chickpeas. It's no artificial flavor, no artificial color, no preservatives, gluten-free, 100% natural, 100% caffeine-free, and gentle on the stomach. Tastes like coffee. And um, simply garbanzo beans. Those are the ingredients. So there you have it doesn't have any nutrition in it. It does have uh, 30 milligrams of potassium, 0.5 carbs, 0.5 sugars, and no protein, 
13 milligrams of sodium. So that's pretty uh, simple. And it's good, you know, I, I would get this again if I had to have it. I still have a whole bag of uh, praline flavored, so I would definitely use that at first. But, um, yeah, it makes a good coffee replacement if you like a, the drip kind rather than just instant, like um, chickpea coffee, I think, mostly comes in instant. Not chickpea, chicory. Chicory coffee mostly comes in the instant form. So, all right, uh, I'm going to go enjoy this coffee, and I will meet you at the budget book over there in a few minutes. Hey, here I am back at the budget book. Well, yesterday I hadn't planned on spending any money. I stayed home, and but I did. I spent some money yesterday. I was watching YouTube videos, and usually, you know, I, the commercials that are on there, I just, you know, they, they have, as you're scrolling through, different products that you can buy. Well, I came across the Rise Coffee. I'm not sure if you pronounce it that way. It's R-Y-S-E. It's a coffee replacement, and they advertise that it's good for your gut. It's gut healing. Um, and I've been meaning to try that anyway, so it wasn't really an impulse buy. It was just a, a deal they were having on it for St. Patrick's Day. And uh, if you buy it on Amazon, it's like $50, $57 for a bag of it. Now, it's more like an instant beverage rather than a drip, um, but it's made with... Uh, Mushrooms, it's a mushroom coffee, and um, chicory. So I wanted to try it because the gut healing caught my eye. And I thought, well, they had it on sale. Now it was a smaller bag. And then you had a couple perks that came with it, and you also had the opportunity to buy another bag at half price. So Altogether, I spent $48 on this coffee beverage. So I haven't gotten it yet, but I will definitely do a review on it. I mean, I paid for it out of my pocket. It's, it's not sponsored, but I'll definitely do a review on it and let you know what I think and if it really does make a difference on the gut. So I bought that. And I thought, well, if it works, that's definitely worth spending the money on. But I wouldn't drink it all the time. It's just too expensive for that. But when I'm having issues with my GI system, then I would, you know, have it on hand to switch over to that for a while. Just like I'm drinking the Bueno coffee right now. Now, at one point... Uh, I d did drink Capomo coffee on another episode of the continuing saga of Ellen's gut. <laughs> and the Capomo is good, too. Uh, it's a nut that you use, actually, as a drip type of coffee replacement. And uh, it was good. I drank that for a while. But uh, I like to try different things. It's not like, oh my God, I'm in love with this. I could definitely drink this forever because a lot of that stuff is very expensive. So I want to have a couple of different options on hand uh, when this flares up, which is happening more often as I grow older. When I was younger, it flared up, but not as much as it does now. So enough about my coffee saga. Um, I'm planning on staying home today. There's really nothing I need. So uh, I'm not going to spend money if I don't have to today. And uh, like I said yesterday, you know, when you're doing a no low spend, you want to keep the, mon uh, the month definitely low spend. But Unless you're doing a strictly no spend, I'm not even buying a, a, a toothpick or a paper clip. You know, it, you're a little bit more flexible. 
So you don't have to really do a no spend all in one chunk. You know, you don't have to say, okay, this week I'm not doing, I'm not spending anything. You can do it that way. But that's not the way I do it. I do it as, uh, like, for now, I think I have 15 days where, up to here, I think I had 15 days where I didn't spend, is that right? I don't know, I have to count. Anyway, I had uh, six, no, five days where I did spend. So it's still, it's still a, a no spend chunk of time. It's a good chunk of time, but it's not all in one fell swoop. That's just the way I do it. You know, however you want to do it is up to you if you're tracking the way that I track. So anyway, um, trying to keep it low spend this month, and so far it's going pretty well. But like I said, when I see a deal on something that I've wanted, I do buy it, even if I'm on a no low spend depending on what it is. You know, if it's something that I don't absolutely love or I don't absolutely have to have, then I won't buy it. Otherwise, I will. So, okay, that's my little chat on the budget today, trying to stretch my money as far as I can. When you're on a lower income, that's what you have to do, especially if you don't want to get a poor man's mindset, which is bad. You don't want to ever get a poor man's mindset. You're not a victim. You're not poor in other things rather than money. So you can count your blessings, see what you're rich in, and I know some people have more than others, and it's always been that way, and it will always be that way. And some people are more ambitious, and other people not so much. So, you know, you need to be rewarded for your uh, work and your efforts. And that doesn't mean you have to give it away to everybody else that is maybe a little lazier than you are and doesn't want to put in the effort. You know, that's not your problem. That's their problem. So anyway, lots of opportunities in this country for all of us. We all have the opportunity to get an education. What we do with that is up to us, whether that's going to college with a grant or uh, getting Pell Grants. Those are available for low-income uh, families. And uh, there's, there's help out there, but you have to put in the work. You can't sit there all day doing nothing and expect everything just to come to you. That's not the way life works. So, all right, enough of that. I'm going to finish enjoying my coffee, and I'll see you in a little bit. Oh, dear, look what's going on out there. It's snowing again. Lots of robins out there, though, looking for food. One right there in the tree. Makes it hard for them to find food. Suppose I should feed the birds, but I don't have any bird seed. Robins actually eat fruit. I don't think they eat bird seed. They eat fruit and bugs and worms, but don't quote me on that. But I think that's true. All right, well, I'm staying in. Yuck. Time for some tea. Just plain old Lipton tea. That's what my mom drinks. Cheers. And you know, I think about that. My mom doesn't have like a hundred spices. She has basics. She doesn't have a hundred different teas. She has basics. She has a basic coffee pot. She has basic coffee. <laughs> where, where did we just go crazy? I don't know. Uh, my mom, of course, you know, she was a girl during World War II, and her family, my family, uh, had to leave their home 
and evacuate their city because of the war. And she lived through some hard times. So she knows what being frugal is all about and not wasting. And my mom is a wonderful cook. She always has been, and she still is. She still makes her own food, and um, she always wants to feed you. You know, whenever you go there, she wants to feed you. It's, it's, it's a way for some people, especially the old timers, it, it's a way for them to show love. They, they want to give you food. But, yeah, back in those days, meat was very scarce. You know, usually the, the breadwinner of the family got most of the meat because they needed to work. And, um, you know, it was just so many different times that it's hard to imagine going back to that. But they did well. I mean, it, that was a wonderful generation. They weren't as spoiled as we are. I mean, even us baby boomers, we're pretty spoiled. I think, I think we as baby boomers lived in one of the best times of this country's history. I really do. Let me know if you, you agree in the comments below. Um, but yeah, just basic Lipton tea. Whenever I drink that, I think of my mom and all the basics that, that uh, she uses still to this day. So I've been watching a lot of uh, like Epic TV, E-P-O-C-H TV. They have a subscription special where it only costs a dollar a month to subscribe to their uh, papers. And two of my favorite um, investigative journalists are uh, Joshua Phillip and Roman Balkamoff. I think that's how you pronounce it. And they each have their own show and commentary on Epic TV. But they also write articles. So uh, that, if you want to know a lot about what's going on in the clown world, <laughs> you might want to check it out. And even, you know, for a dollar, uh, I mean, I'm not affiliated monetarily with them, but for a dollar, it's very informative. Rather than always watching the same old, same old narrative that goes around and round. So today is snowing again. I'm glad I can stay home. And it kind of reminds me of, you know, what would I do if... I couldn't leave the house. I think about this a lot when I declutter. You know, would this be something that I could use to entertain myself? Or would this be something I could use to maybe trade with somebody? Not that I want to keep everything. I don't want to hoard my house. That, that's not what I'm saying. But even with my books, I don't want to over-purge those because some of them I haven't really read. I just kind of glance through them and look through them, but I haven't actually sat down and read them because a lot of them are books on gardening, and it's it doesn't read like a novel. And a lot of them are cookbooks. Those don't read like a novel either. I use a lot of those resources for educational purposes, for things that I may or may not do at some point. Um, I've learned a lot about gardening uh, uh, from my garden books and also from watching YouTube channels. There's tons of wonderful YouTube channels out there for uh, gardening. So I like to use multiple resources when I want to learn something. And I'm that way, too, with the news. I don't just watch one news channel, um, but I don't watch mainstream news at all. I, I just, I cringe when I hear the stuff that comes out of their mouth. So, but I do like multiple independent um, YouTubers that are up on this stuff, 
and then I watch several of them and see if they're all saying the same things. So I like to keep my mind active that way and not just be, uh, become lazy and just take, take everything for face value. I like to do a little bit of digging, literally, with my gardening, but uh, also with what's going on in the world. Now, up until I would say 2020, I didn't pay attention to the news at all. It was like, yeah, life's good. We're just going to keep on the way we're doing. But then when things changed so quickly, and then I had to start digging as to what the heck is going on here. Something is just fishy, and it smells funny. So anyway, that's what I do. But like I said, when I declutter... Uh, I mean, I don't want to make this a political commentary at all. But when I declutter, I want to think about, is this something that if I became homebound that I might be able to use to educate myself or entertain myself? Or, um, you know, is it something useful? I guess that's what I'm trying to say. So a lot of what I get rid of is, um, you know, old decor that I don't like anymore, um, old um, clothes that I don't like anymore. But that's another thing I don't want to over declutter because uh, I really don't want to have to go out and buy new clothes. I have enough clothes to last me for several years, and I really don't want to go out and buy a lot of new things. Now, does that mean I'll, I'll never buy another shirt or pants or blouse? No, that doesn't mean that at all. But I don't want to make it to the point where I'm washing my clothes and they're falling apart and I have nothing to wear, or my shoes have holes in them and I have no new shoes. So, But a lot of the things that I've gotten rid of in a, as far as my wardrobe as far as my shoes go, uh, I did a huge shoe declutter uh, last year, and it was mainly things like high heels, and, uh, you know, did it hurt to get rid of them? Oh, yeah, because they were really cute, but it's like, Ellen, you can't wear those anymore. You know, you, you'd be so uncomfortable if you had to walk around in those, So, and some of them were like brand new. So I let those go. Same thing with all my dresses that I used to use for work. Now, I used to wear heels to work, but, you know, I've been retired for over 10 years, so I haven't needed to wear high heels anywhere, really. Uh, I mean, when Tom and I, when I was still married to him and we'd go out, I'd, you know, put on low heels, and that was fine. But I wasn't going for a walk. I was going to... A restaurant or a friend's house or something like that so um, you know we would walk from the car to the restaurant and sit down and then walk back to the car so I still used to wear heels then but uh, I, I don't date anymore so I don't need all that stuff and I have no desire to date so um, I don't feel a void in that part of my life so but, um, yeah, when I declutter, that's what I think about, you know, and how can I make this room easier to clean? You know, what can I take off a counter or what can I take off the floor? How can I make this room a little easier to keep clean? Because it's not an easy thing when you have three dogs, you know, they're, they're hairy and they're messy, <laughs> but they're so cute. I love my dogs. I really, really do. I mean, go ahead and make dirt. <laughs> That's all I can say. So I just wanted to talk a little bit about that. I wanted to tell you about the uh, Epic Times, E-P-O-C-H, not Epic, Epoch, Epoch, Epoch Times couple of my favorite commentators. Um, 
So let me know in the comments below, what are some of your favorite commentators? What are some of the things that you think are worth keeping um, when you're decluttering? Now, I've got a ton of pots and pans, and I already decluttered a lot of those, but I still have too many. And like everything, you know, I've, I've noticed that I have favorites. I have favorite pots and pans. I have favorite clothes. I have favorite shoes. You know, and those are the things that I wear or use over and over again. So sometimes it's like, where can I move something to? Can I move it somewhere so that I'll use it more often? Sometimes that helps. Uh, like my egg cooker. I had that kind of tucked away. Now, I do use it, but it was a real pain in the butt to get out because I had to move a cart, and then I had to, you know, dig it out, and then I had to put it back and move the cart back and forth. So I just took that out of there, and I put it in a different cupboard, and now I use it much more often. I mean, that's how I cook my eggs, is in my egg cooker. So I've had that for years, but sometimes just rearranging something so that it's more accessible will help you to use it more often. So I'm thinking during my next kitchen declutter, uh, that's what I want to do. I mean, a lot of my things have been in the same location for years since I moved in here, actually. And uh, it, it, sometimes I just don't use them because they're just not easy to get to. So I want to change things around and put some things that I don't use too often elsewhere and just make things easier to get to. So, well, the, the natives are getting restless here. They need to go out. So I'll be back in a little while. Daddy. Yeah, you want to go out in the snow? Oh, let's see. What's it doing out here? What is that? Oops, I put my finger in front of the lens. Sorry about that. That's what happens when you hold your camera. Oh, look at that. We got quite a bit more snow since this morning. Oops. Oh, bandages, peas, wherever. Yeah, he pees on everything. So, yep, here we are, back to winter. It's nice and refreshing, though. All right. Back to my milling around here, doing stuff. Well, I'm thinking about putting together another home, uh, home book, like keeping for keeping records and things. And I was looking up my clean, my old cleaning schedule from years ago that I used to be able to do. So I found that, and I have this notebook, and I have a bunch of notes and things in here. Notes on cleaning stuff. I, I want to go through that and see what is still uh, what still works for me. But I have this little piece of paper that I have from years ago with my cleaning schedule on it. Now, every day I had something different. Like uh, Mondays I had kitchen, I had the counters and the floor. Well, I really don't think I would do the counters and the floor together anymore. Um, I would do either or in one day. One day I would do the counters, clean those off nicely, and then the next time I would do the floors. And that might even work doing like every other week. Um, I'm not talking about sweeping, I'm talking about washing the floors. Now some people, you know, want to wash their floors every week. I don't. <laughs> Honestly, I don't. I should, but I don't. But I'm trying to figure out a way where I can keep things a little bit cleaner and still be able to do, you know, to do it. So, and then Tuesday I had the living room. I had vacuum the couch covers and the floor. Now that I could do, you know, once I have my little lightweight vacuum cleaner. And I use a stick broom because I find the uh, heavy-duty 
vacuum cleaner, and actually my vacuum cleaner isn't that heavy, but um, I find that a little bit too cumbersome. So I like to use my stick broom, and the one I have now that I just got recently has a beater brush on it, so um, I want to use that. And so that I can do. I can do, like on a Tuesday, you know, Monday if I did my kitchen counters, uh, on a Tuesday I could do, uh, you know, just carry on and do the uh, living room floor and the dining room floor. Now that's mainly just cleaning downstairs. Uh, this doesn't really uh, incorporate the upstairs, but the upstairs really, I mean, my grandson uses one of the bedrooms up there. He's mostly in the basement, but he does like to sleep upstairs. And then it's mainly just my bedroom and bathroom that I have to keep clean. And then, of course, I have your token junk room where everything seems to be accumulating that I want to uh, clean up. So uh, I want to incorporate all that stuff in with some basic things so that I can just not be totally worn out at the end of the day and be good for nothing. So, uh, Tuesday, couch covers and the floor, that's doable. Uh, Wednesday, again, I'm in the kitchen. I could do the floors on Wednesday, since I already cleaned the counters on Monday. Thursday, it says uh, living room dust in the floor. I can vacuum the floor again quickly and just dust. That would make a once a week dusting. Now, the laundry room and the uh, half bath is kind of all in one area so um, I can do I can clean that room and the half bath it's not that big a deal Saturday water my plants do the laundry and sheets and do my foyer and the stairs well the foyer and the stairs I would probably do on Sunday so that would be doable so I think that's what I'm going to do for my weekly cleaning schedule um, just do little bits of this and that as I can and uh, not be so sore and worn out at the end of the day. Now, I know it's like, oh, geez, Ellen, is that all you can accomplish? But, you know, I'm talking about getting this stuff done along with some decluttering and organizing. So, but I don't totally want to let cleaning the house go while I'm doing the, the process of decluttering. So I don't know, what do you guys think? Does it sound like something that you could do? Or could you run circles around me? I'm sure I'm sure a lot of people could. But I'm just trying to make my life fit my ability and what I want to do and what I can do. And like I said, I don't want to spend all my time cleaning. I just don't want to do that. I think uh, a lot of people love to clean. In fact, that's their hobby. My mom, she was always cleaning something. You know, I talked to her on the phone, and it's like, oh, yeah, today I cleaned this, and I cleaned that, and it's like, oh, oh, good. <laughs> Not my thing. This apple uh, fell pretty far from that part of the apple tree. But um, anyway... So just trying to make sense of things. I guess I'm just trying to make sense of everything. The world, my agenda, my life. I want to make it make sense. I guess that's what I'm trying to accomplish. So all right, my friends, for dinner I'm just having a simple baked potato and I bought some bagged uh, salad the other day when I took my mom shopping. So I, I love to eat a salad and a baked potato. I, I, that's really a good meal for me. And I boiled some eggs, so I'll put some eggs, chopped up egg in my salad. And uh, that's one of my favorite things to put in a salad is chopped up egg. So, all right, my friends, that's all I have for you today. I want to wish you abundant blessings. I love you guys. Be good to yourself. Be good to others. God bless you, and I'll see you next time. 
you enjoyed this video, please subscribe, comment, and like. It helps my channel grow. Don't forget to share, and thanks for watching.